We know how much potential and need there is for music making in our societies. And we also know that the lives of professional musicians are becoming more and more challenging and that the work of specialist higher music education is becoming ever more complex. Nina is a talented classical cellist, a prize winner in the final year of a performance course. For many years, she has worked intensively on core repertoires. She has also been participating in pop and folk bands outside of the conservatoire. But she's reluctant to mention this to her teachers. She fears their response. Nina would really like to include some of this music in her conservatoire experience. But she senses that a career working across different kinds of music is not so welcome. Nina now faces working life and is wondering how to build a career sustainably, what to do beyond continuing to practice and finding some teaching work. Peter is responsible for the music programmes in an institution that offers jazz, rock and pop, world music and classical disciplines. Each programme has its integrity and has developed a rich curriculum. Further elements of study have been added, like research, entrepreneurship, improvisation and community engagement. Students are obliged to take these courses and they have opportunities for optional subjects and to study abroad as well. But each course element is taught by a different expert and there is little interaction between subjects and some instrumental and vocal staff contest the addition of these courses. Tell students that practicing is more important and advise them not to attend. Anna leads a specialist higher music education institution. She is under intense political pressure and faces financial cuts. The institution is already perceived by some policymakers to be too costly. A nice to have, hardly something essential. The institution is also felt by many residents in the city to be elitist. What does it offer to poorer communities or to those with diverse musical and cultural traditions? Musicians' careers are changing rapidly, just as the entire music industry is changing. How should we respond to this in higher music education? And further, as arts institutions, how can we counter perceptions of elitism or of music making being a marginal or luxury interest? How can we remove barriers to access and widen participation? Ultimately, how can we renew the extraordinary potential of music making in our societies and the place of professional musicians within them? Together with the other members of the SMS Working Group on higher music education's role in society, we have spent the last years reflecting on these questions. We have concluded that specialist higher music education institutions need to do three things that are interconnected. First, they need to develop the core of higher music education further. Second, they need to connect dynamically and reciprocally with their local communities and wider society. And third, they need to deepen advocacy to engage stakeholders in their relevance locally and globally. Following the COVID-19 pandemic, the imperatives to make progress are more urgent than ever. To achieve these objectives, 
We think there is a need for a change of paradigm in the very foundation of higher music education. A change in the lens through which we look at what an artist is and does and at what specialist higher music education institutions are and do. We have published an extended journal paper to set out the arguments for this. The change of paradigm that we propose means connecting values and priorities which have previously all too often been perceived to conflict. For example, priorities such as artistic autonomy and craft expertise on the one hand, and on the other hand, social and societal aspects of music making such as connecting with diverse audiences, addressing inequalities, or exploring the challenges of migration, climate change, conflict and violence, loneliness and isolation, and so on. We propose that the reciprocity of these priorities, their interdependence, is essential. Our paradigm therefore fundamentally bridges artistic and social elements. And we call it the musician as a maker in society. It recognises that musicians must be immersed in their artistry, but it brings this into dialogue with their motivations as a human being and with practical experiences of engaging with communities. To dig a little deeper into the term making that is included in the paradigm of the musician as a maker in society. Making involves creative work and prioritises active interpretation and organisation of performance. Making recognises social orientation in musical craft. The musician, as a maker in society, always creates afresh and for a specific situation and context. It is about more than being creative in aesthetic ways. Making is not detached from the world. On the contrary, it embraces social situations. This also means that it embraces the political and the moral implications of being a professional musician. In practice, making opens up diverse ways of programming, or, for example, of incorporating improvisatory aspects of performance alongside composed music. Equally, it opens up different ways of engaging with audiences and participants, of collaborating or co-creating with them, as well as with other artists. The musician as a maker in society takes on the serious challenge of partnering values between the artistic and the social dimensions of music making. And it therefore embraces the creative tensions between, for example, canon repertoires and making new work, between artistic imagination and cultural entrepreneurship, between craft apprenticeship through working one-to-one -one with expert teachers and self-directed and collaborative learning in diverse contexts. Emerging practices are growing in sophistication. There are many existing examples of musicians finding powerful and innovative forms of practice. From the company, Bold Tendencies and its multi-story orchestra in an inner city car park, to Wynton Marsalis's jazz at the Lincoln Center. From Rinika Schmilder's person-centered improvisation in hospital settings, to Nicola Benedetti's foundation, working to inspire and develop young string players. The imaginative potential, musically and socially, is unlimited. Indeed, the paradigm of maker in society also hints towards further potential orientations. For example, being a maker for society, or even a maker of society. 
One example from a sister visual art form, where the concept of making is perhaps more established already, perfectly illustrates the power of this paradigm. A herd of a hundred elephant sculptures is traveling the world in a series of exhibitions free to the public. As it does so, the elephants call on people to reflect on living well and in harmony with the nature around them. Life-size, and each modeled on a living elephant in the wild, these are sculptures that have been created deep in the jungles of Tamil Nadu by indigenous communities. Made from Lantana camera, an invasive wild plant, the elephants were imagined in response to pressing local environmental issues. There are many resonances in this project with the paradigm of maker in society and its underpinning principle of partnering values. The starting point is not simply to develop an audience around a piece of art. Rather, it began with a designer wanting to engage with an issue in their local society and wanting to work holistically with this as an artist. Instead of assuming opposition between artistic and social values or between traditional craft skills and making new work, the project brings these together. Artistic imagination in a particular societal context has sparked the idea. The project has then been conceived by an artist with the deep skills and craft knowledge of theatre design. The artist's eye and attention to detail in modelling the elephants on individual animals and in shaping each likeness to an existing elephant has been essential. There is also profound social imagination involved in the project's conception, the desire to be close to the animals and to learn from them, to bring them to greater awareness in a local population. The choice of material for the sculptures is imaginative. And there is imagination too in the cultural entrepreneurship enabling the elephants to travel in order to raise awareness of environmental issues and to raise money. Those elephant sculptures are sold as they tour and the project is doing well financially. There is yet another dimension of partnering values at play. Instead of seeing opposition between artistic expertise and making work inclusively, the project connects these values. Alongside an internationally trained artist, the project has gathered a local team of craftspeople to build the elephants, and the making process has created significant employment within that community. This example illustrates just one version of integrated artistic and social imagination and how this may play out for an artist as a maker in society. Musicians too can be makers in society in rich and multi-layered ways without abandoning their core artistry. They can engage with societal issues locally and globally while leading with their artistic craft and heritage to co-create relevant and new modes of performance and participation in music making. We are not talking about replacing an old artistry with a new one, but rather about broadening artistry to be intimately entwined with societal context, issues and potential. So in the paper that we have published, we are calling for specialist higher music education institutions to take ownership of that paradigm, of the musician as maker in society, in order to support artists of the future and in order to renew the place of these institutions in society. Coming back to our original examples, it will enable Nina, Peter and Anna to move forwards. Nina will have been encouraged from the beginning of her studies by her teachers, as well as through the curriculum, 
to explore the potential of her different musical interests and experiences, and to create her own work alongside performing repertoire. She will have paid attention to building networks, will have connected with local communities, and will have gained hands-on experience of the practicalities of setting up as a professional. In Peter's institution, curricula will have been redesigned in a holistic way, so that subjects like research, entrepreneurship and community engagement are fully integrated into the student's education rather than being disjointed additions. Instrumental and vocal staff members will encourage students to link artistic practice to societal values and they will be trained and ready to support this integration of subjects in practice. Anna will be demonstrating the impact of her institution in society in multiple different ways, through its contributions to the locality and connections to communities, through its global connections, and through the contributions of students and graduates to the future of the music industries. The musician as a maker in society paradigm, bringing together artistic and in social values, will be embedded within the institutional culture. It will lead to ongoing and dynamic reflection on what makes successful artistic practice in society. And it will drive change across many parts of the institution, including how students are recruited, and how diverse people in society are empowered to participate. Nevertheless, putting the paradigm into practice is complex, and there are plenty of further questions that need to be addressed, such as, which changes to curriculum and learning environment precisely will support students to take ownership of their emerging potential as makers in society? How can each institution best develop its presence in society? What focused actions are needed? And what kinds of leadership are needed to enable this paradigm to take root within an institution as a whole? reaching across its whole community. We urge you to look more deeply into the article we published, to reflect together on the detailed arguments and concepts within it, and to foster discussion and critical debate with colleagues, through networks, and with local communities and policymakers. This, we believe, to be critical in making the future of higher music education at a critical point in contemporary societies. AEC connects higher music education institutions throughout Europe and beyond. To stay informed and connected, make sure to follow us on our social media channels or to subscribe to our newsletter on the AEC website.